So today I posted a video on Twitter um, of me catching a carp, and it's got over 4,000 views in like less than 12 hours. So it made me think maybe people have more interest in carp fishing than I thought. So I thought I would walk you through how I do it, um, just in case some of you guys have kids out there that that are maybe getting a little older and, and bluegills not, you know, really getting them excited anymore. Um, this is a perfect next step up. Um, carp are everywhere. Uh, the bait's really cheap. Um, it's an easy technique. And uh, let me show you how I do it. So I use bread. Uh, there's many other choices. I use a really small eagle claw hook. You can find those at Walmart. Um, I use Power Pro braid, but I use that for everything, 30 pound. You can also find that at Walmart. Um, and there's two different ways you can do it. You can fish on the top and you can fish on the bottom, which which is really neat. So if you want to fish on the top, which is what I do most of the time, um, I fold this over and just slightly, slightly push it together. And then I fold it over again to make almost like a, like a square. And you can see how it's, you know, I'm not mushing it together because um, I'll show you that in a second. Now when you attach this to the hook and cast it out, it'll float, um, which would be perfect, but in this case, there is so much stuff on the water. Um, I'm losing track of my bait. Uh, a lot of fish are feeding on the bottom, and uh, honestly, I've been spooking them a lot. I've spooked maybe uh, about 10 now, different groups of fish. Uh, carp get scared real easily, so you need to be you know, kind of quiet. Um, don't move around a lot. At one time I just turned my shoulder to look at something and it scared them all away. I was over there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna fish on the bottom. Um, it's not as ex exciting as like actually watching him come up and, and take the bait. Um, but I think it's gonna be more effective today, especially with all the stuff in the water. So now this time I'm just gonna take it and I'm going to uh, mush it up in this ball, just like that. Set this down for a second. I'm not sure if you can see this or not. I mean, it's pretty simple to put it in common sense. Just kind of nudge it in there like this. Sometimes I like the other side of the hook to come out. Something like this. I want to make sure I get that hook set. I'm not sure if you can see that or not. This will this will stay on pretty good. So with carp, they're already back. Um, they don't go out very far, so we don't need to make a really long, super elegant cast. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to toss it out here in the middle. Right where I see those swirls. Are those swirls are carp swimming around. And hopefully this doesn't scare them away. Oh, right on top of them. Perfect. Now, the most important thing we're going to do here is we're going to watch our line. And if when the carp takes the bait, the line is just going to... It's gonna go really fast. So I keep my rod tip down and watch the line. Once the fish takes the line, I go straight up and set the hook. And you always wanna be paying attention. Ooh, there's a squirrel right over my bait. Because if you put your rod down to walk away and a carp takes your bait, um, your rod is gonna go into the water. And it's happened to me more than once. I've lost rods and I've jumped in after rods. And uh, you don't want to do that. It's not that deep here, but still. If an emergency happens, just reel it in, or you can always flip the bail, but make sure you have a friend close by. You can still get it dragged in um, if you have your bail open. So, carp like people food. Um, I use bread just for those two reasons. You can fish it on the top and the bottom, and it's always worked anywhere I've went. Um, they also like corn. Uh, they also like peas. Um, they also like peanut butter. Um, I've used dough before, you know, it's kind of like bread. Um, it doesn't stay on the hook as well. Make sure that's 
in there straight. Um, but yeah, really anything. French fries. I've, I've used a lot of French fries. Uh, something about the oil in the French fry, it's, uh, they really like it. I've caught a lot of carp on French fries. Um, so anything really. The other day I caught one on a nacho, um, believe it or not. So especially if there's a lot of carp in here. Um, carp, they, they don't eat other fish. They just they eat plants and uh, things like that, vegetation. A lot of people don't like to fish for carp. Um, I still find it fun, especially for kids. Yeah, I was going to take my daughter today, but she was sick. Um, but this, yeah, this is how you do it. It's more exciting. Um, I'll have to do another video when there's not all this stuff on the ground or on the water so I can show you how, how to just spread out all of your, uh, your bread on the water. And most of the time, the bluegill will come up and start attacking it first. So about half the loaf of bread you're going to use is just going to get eaten by bluegill. Um, but when the bigger fish come in, the carp and catfish, I've caught a lot of catfish like this too. Um, when they move in, oh shit. Yeah, something, see something spooked him. I don't think that was me this time. But that's disappointing because that, that's going to scare all the fish. And this, like I said, this is the 10th time something has spooked a fish. Or I had to reset, go over the bait again. Um, this time I'm just leaving it in the water. Um, but I'll do another video showing you how to, uh, maybe at a different place too, because these carp get way too spooked. Um, obviously if you're being loud, if you're playing music, you know, your kids are running around, they're yelling, uh, throwing rocks in, yes, that's going to scare them away in most cases, but I've never had them spooked like this. Um, I don't know what they're looking at, but um, anyway, I'll do another video uh, showing you that because it's a lot more fun, and uh, it's one of the most exciting bites in fishing. When you throw out your, your your bread, you're looking at it, and it's like in slow motion because the carp will slowly come up, slowly look at it, and then make a decision, A, I'm going to eat this, or B, Nope, and just get spooked like you see that big, uh, you saw that big swirl. So exciting, it's like you never know if he's going to eat it or not. It's like a 50-50 chance. So it, it still like amps me up, you know, and it's the same way I did when I was, you know, 12. But this is kind of exciting too, it just happens a lot quicker. Um, you, your line just shoots out and then um, and you set the hook. Carpal battle, um, they get tired pretty easily for a big fish. Um, they'll take out your drag a lot. Uh, it'll take a couple times, like I told you before, they get spooked. So once you get them in close, uh, maybe have a net or just be prepared to get wet the first couple times you, you go down to, to grab them out of the water because once he sees you, he's going to get energy again and make another run. Most people use nets. I, I've never used nets. I've always just grab the fish out of the water um, but a net would be handy with for carp for sure especially with kids if you're trying to help your son or daughter hold the rod um, always check your drag you know you want your drag to be pretty pretty tight carp they come off a lot too um, more than like when you're fishing on the bottom and i think it's because like the dough is just a little harder so a little less chance of a hook set apparently if they take it off the top you're more than likely going to hook it because you'll see them eat, eat the bait and then you'll know when to set the hook this is more of a, a surprise um a couple over the move back i saw a really big one um i took another video this is like my 10th video um Oh, there it goes. Oh, shoot. But you got to see how fast that went. Get this stuff off the line and try to get it back out there. Oh. Get those 
rocks off. Okay, that's pretty close to where he was. Hopefully I didn't scare him away. I also don't like fishing in this uh, this white stuff because it gets on your line and it's just, ugh. It's a pain to get off. Yeah, that's, that's definitely a carp uh, or a catfish. I had a catfish take it out yesterday too. Bluegill, they won't move the line like that ever. Um, they might be down there nibbling at it, um, but definitely carp or catfish. Yeah, I've never seen so much stuff in the water like this, and it doesn't even look like there's a, a tree around that's, that's creating it. These are perfect conditions though. Um, it's almost June, I'm in Ohio. It's about eight o'clock. Uh, this is actually a little pool area. Um, so it's only a few feet deep, three feet deep. Um, so you can see them really well. And I really like sight fishing these guys. This is the fun, you can walk around, you see them swimming, and then you kind of just pitch the bait maybe about about a yard in front of the fish uh, in the direction it's going and more than likely I mean he'll definitely notice it I mean, they don't eat it all the time um, like I said that's why it's the really suspenseful but um, yeah they'll, they'll notice it right away here it's more difficult because of all the different debris in the water the bread is white the, these plants are white um, no wind which is good I really I really like to stand up and you can see the fish I mean you can count them see how many they are um, like I said position one's getting really close to us here our line's starting to move starting to move starting to move I like oh we got him though that one did not go out fast damn Oh shit, I'm gonna get stuck in that fucking rope. Oh fuck, I'm gonna get stuck on that rope. Come here, buddy. We're gonna walk this way away from the rope. You never wanna deal with trees. Oh fuck. Come on, buddy. Get away from that rope. This feels like a decent one. Tighten my drag a little bit just because. We got this 30 pound braid, so it's not snapping the line. Kind of had a stalemate. Reeling in. Reeling in. This feels like maybe it's the big one. It's definitely got some girth. Now, if you were to see that carp slowly coming up to your bait, slowly looking at it. Man, this thing's, yeah, this is a catfish because it's not running like a carp. Carpfish run. This is more like, this is like when you're reeling in a, like a dead weight. All right, some, oh shit, something happened. Head, that was a head shake. Whew, I thought it got off. You know what, guys? I think we might have a catfish here. Oh my goodness. Now you're telling me that if you take your kid down here, because I'll tell you right now, my adrenaline is pumping. You take your kid down here, your girlfriend, your neighbor. Oh, it's a carp. Damn. 
surprised. Now, remember I told you we we're going to get wet? Oh. Oh, buddy. Oh, shit, man. This is a good one. Sorry for the kids watching. Maybe it feels bigger because I'm like holding the rod with one arm. Oh, it's not that big. Usually you got two, two hands on the rod, you know. Look at all that stuff on my line. Ugh. This guy's tiring me out. One hand. That's a weird looking one. Usually I'd be a lot, I'd play with them a lot more when I'm recording this video. I don't really horse them in like this. I mean, these are pretty nice sized fish. The one good thing about a net is once you get them close, you can scoop them in. You don't have to tire them out, but the carp get tired pretty quick. He'll start floating sideways. That's a really strange looking carp. Starting to slow down a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna put you down just to grab them. Look at that thing. That is. I've never seen one like that. It's like half of its scales are gone. One, two, three. It's bigger than the one I caught the other day. Man, it's chunky. It's a chunky guy. So, yeah, I'm going to unhook him. Um, if you have any questions, like, leave me a comment, depending on where you see this video posted at. Um, Brad, it works. It always works. It always has. It always will. Um, take your kids fishing. Let them land one of these guys. Hopefully yours won't be as ugly. Thanks for watching.